And welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Democratic State Representative Brenda Gilmore and syndicated conservative talk show host Steve Gill. I know that you both saw the back and forth this week with President Obama and former Vice President Cheney being called an unprecedented event. They both really called each other out and both stuck, stood by their guns, neither giving an inch. Mm -hmm. Reactions, I guess, to what we saw. Well, I thought Vice President Cheney had eight years to be vice president and to do what he could to help keep this nation safe. And uh, I've appreciated uh, that time. I do think, though, that this is a conversation that should not be held uh, publicly. Mm. Uh, I, don't, I just don't think that we need to let uh, some of our adversaries or those people who may even be terrorists know that we have this conversation going back and forth about whether America is safe or not. So I, I think it's now it's time for uh, Vice President Cheney, if he had some suggestion, to go to the uh, president and to t sit down and talk with him, but not to take care of it through the media circus that is being done as it, as it is now. It's basically a whole discussion on the nation's policies regarding terrorism, and it's a 180-degree difference. Well, and again, I think that uh, Vice President Cheney is speaking out because he and the Bush administration have been smeared consistently by this administration. This administration is wanting to release memos to disclose what interrogations were done, but not release what the results were of those interrogations that kept us safe. They're wanting to release terrorists. They're wanting to bring terrorists in this country and try them in our courts. And yesterday, when the president was speaking on this uh, terrorism and national security issue, he didn't even bring up the fact that that very morning in New York, a huge terror attack had been averted by arrest for uh, converts to Islam in our prison. So I think it is a conversation that should be held. I think it should be held publicly, and I think we ought to get more facts out, not less. Frankly, I think it's a conversation, and maybe we'll even agree on this one, that should have been held more succinctly like we saw yesterday during the, during the campaign. This is what the campaign should have been about, divergent views, airing them out, arguing the different positions, and unfortunately we didn't do that during the campaign. Is this a conversation about tactics or more about philosophy? Well, and also I think we have to keep in mind that this is the same vice president that said we should go to Iraq and that there was weapons of mass destruction. And what we've seen is actually uh, over 4,000 of our young men and our young women have been killed as a result. So I just don't know how much credibility uh, we should place in Vice President uh, Cheney. I hope that um, it's not an uh, issue of egos because this is a subject that is far, far too important. Uh, for I would us to point do out that. that we also had former President Bill Clinton, former presidential candidate John Kerry, and U.S. Senator Hillary, Hillary Clinton, and a whole host of others uh, on the Democratic side of the aisle saying that there were weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction were not only in Iraq, they were used in Iraq over the last uh, 10 years. So uh, the idea that somehow the Bush administration misrepresented that, you had plenty of folks both before the Bush administration during the Clinton years and during the Bush years admitting to the same thing. I would agree that this, uh, this debate should not be about ego. It should be about policy. And I think that's pretty much what the debate was yesterday. The challenge, and I think that Dick Cheney laid it out perfectly, is there's no middle ground. You can't yeah. negotiate and find a middle ground with terrorists. If they want to launch 30 attacks on America, we can't say, well, 15 will be okay. It's either black or white. It's, it's right or wrong. It's, it's, it's all or nothing. We've got to stop every terror attack. Well, and actually, Mr. Gates, who was under the Bush administration, says that he feels like that President Obama's policies are keeping America safe. It seems, too, there's discussion and hope for some bipartisan support on different kinds of issues. This discussion seems to have galvanized partisan politics, draw, drew the line in the sand, as it were. I'm not sure, because you had the issue of whether to fund closing Guantanamo Bay, and it was a 90 to 6 vote. Came Only back, six Democrats voted along with it. You've also seen the Democrats go along with saying we shouldn't release the photos of these detainees that have been interrogated. So frankly, I I'm not sure that it's really a partisan block. It's a, the Obama administration is talking about trying these terrorists in our country, releasing them in our country, putting them in prisons in our country, and the Democrats and Republicans in Congress disagree with the president. I think the plan that President Obama has is safe and I think it's very sound. I will agree that uh, President Obama and his administration should have come forth with a plan. That should have been a visible component of, of the ask before they asked for the money. So I will agree. I, I, I think that uh, the Democrats were in error in not approving it. Had I been in that seat, I would have approved it, but I would have expected uh, some kind of plan. Two other big stories coming out of Washington this week. The credit card bill of rights for consumers seems like this has been long overdue to kind of protect people who, from being having their payment dates changed and not being recognized, having interest rates changed. So I guess this is one that maybe is a plus for everybody. 
everybody once it gets through? I'm not sure that it's a plus for everybody. For those that don't pay the bills, for those that uh, that don't pay on time, mm -hmm. they're not going to be be punished for that with higher interest rates, which means the credit card companies are still going to have losses with people who don't pay their bills. They're simply going to pass those along to people, people who, do. who do pay their bills. So again, in our in our system right now that we've got under this administration, we're going to punish the successful. We're going to punish those who play by the rules to reward those who don't. I think it's great. It's great for the consumers because it's going to allow them to have more money in their pockets. We've had some instances where people who did pay their bills on time and simply because they were overextended, they may have just owed too much to another credit card and then credit card A would increase that rate. So I think it's a good thing for all consumers all around. And when consumers have more money in their pockets, they spend more. So it's going to help the economy. The White House also this week uh, imposed what's going to be new fuel economy restrictions for 2016 down the road where cars will have to get 39 miles per gallon, trucks 30 miles per gallon. Seems like a great move in the right direction. The question, I guess, is should these kinds of mandates come from the administration, from the White House, or should it be kind of self-regulated? Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. We all know that the price of gasoline is going to continue to go up. We've got to have more efficiencies in our cars. We're certainly not going to realize it at the gas pumps. And so, uh, unfortunately, if the CEOs are not stepping up to the plate, then we need someone to call their hands. And so I'm pleased that the president is mandating that that occurs. You know, it's not surprising that the automakers who are now solely owned by the, uh, by the government are going along with what the government's telling them to do. And the environmentalists who apparently own the administration are going along with what the administration is saying to do. This will kill people. They are going to mandate smaller cars, lighter cars, that on the highways will lead to more death. You have scientists that acknowledge it will be 800 to 2,600 more deaths on on the highways each year because of these smaller cars, which is more people than we've lost each year at the height of the Iraq war. We're going to lose lives on the, on the highways by mandating cars that the American consumers don't want to buy. We ought to be finding more fuel efficiency, but we ought to do it in a competitive way, not mandate it before we've got a system to do it. Here in Tennessee, Governor Bredesen this week kind of lashed out at criticism of his Cover Kids 10 Care program, where it is a basic coverage for Tennessee children under the age of 18. And the criticism was it doesn't do enough. The governor said, I never mandated this to be the best coverage. It's just mandatory that it is, the, that it is uh, uh, restrictive coverage. It covers certain things. Mm -hmm. So I guess his criticism is, this is what I told you it was going to be. It's not going to cover everything. Mm -hmm. Well, when you promise that you're going to provide people with, with free cable, uh, they ought to expect to get basic cable, not HBO, Showtime, and the rest. By the same token, I, and Brenda may know what the numbers are, I haven't looked at them in a while, when this Cover Kids program was announced, we were being told how many thousands and thousands of kids would sign up mm -hmm. for it. It turned out that the problem apparently wasn't as big as we were being told. As many people didn't sign up as we had been promised. So I, I'm not sure that we can really trust any of the numbers we've gotten in this whole thing. Or at least they haven't signed up yet. Yes, as I understand that there's a 38,000 children have been signed up on it. One of the, th the things that I think that we all need to be concerned about is with the cover of Tennessee, there's the potential for people to get more in debt. So I will admit that I'm a little concerned about that because the coverage is not as extensive as we would like for it to be when uh, people go to the uh, hospitals, mm -hmm. then they have these huge bills and they end more under the water. So yeah, I'm a little concerned about that. Brenda Gilmore, Steve Gill, appreciate very much your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.